Okay, so here are my eggs. I um, ended up doing quite a lot of them. I think there's 16 here, possibly. Um, but that's good because it gives us lots of options. And um, I cut them out. So I cut them out with a bit of a white border, as you can see here. And um, I also, the other thing I did was I outlined the shape with a very fine pen, fine liner pen, black. Um, I use these fine liners, Pigma Micron. Um, they come in different thicknesses and they are um, permanent. So they're not going to be, end up adding some water to these or anything. That's not going to move around. Um, so I've got those. I've also got a Sharpie as well. You could do something like that. Um, you could use anything really. And I think I'm going to stick to black for my doodles. But of course, if you wanted to add some colour, you could do that too. So what we are going to do is we're going to use um, one egg to represent each part of the Easter story as you want to tell it. So um, this, this has been done in lots of different ways historically. So I'm thinking of the Stations of the Cross, um, which I think is um, a Catholic tradition. Um, please let me know if I'm wrong. And uh, this is where uh, you actually think about the day of the crucifixion and there's 12 specific moments in Jesus's journey to the cross that you stop and think about. Um, so I'm not going to use those exact moments, but it's an idea like that. Um, I've also found something on Pinterest called Story Stones. If you've heard of those, it's a, a way of um, working often with children who um, had to help them remember the story in a series of images and then they can put the images in the right order and tell the story themselves in their own words. So you could totally, when you've got this set of, of eggs, you could totally do that with your kids, couldn't you? What a brilliant idea. Um, so I am going to actually start my story. You can start the story wherever you like. I am going to start it way back right at the beginning because I think the Easter story is has its roots, of course, in the whole meta story of God's plan for the world and when he made the world, he made a beautiful garden um, and he put two people in it. And he said, after creating all this stuff, he said, it is good that God intended the world not to be a big mess and full of pain and um, sin. But he started out with a perfect world. And so I'm going to start with an egg that represents the garden, which I might use. Maybe I'll use this nice green one for. So this, I'm gonna just draw some flowers and things like that to represent the Garden of Eden. So I'm just doodling a few little flowers and leaves here, but you totally can do this in your own way. And the point is that while you're doodling, you can be thinking and praying about the portion of the Easter story that you are representing on your egg. So I'm thinking about here in Eden, that everything was how God intended it to be. So mankind was in good relationship, in right relationship with God, um, with each other and with creation. And that's how it's meant to be. But of course, um, everything goes wrong until Jesus comes. So thank you, Jesus, that through the cross, you bring us back into 
those right relationships. Okay, so there's my first little egg. So the next thing that happens in my story is um, it all goes wrong. <laughs> so instead of continuing to live in this amazing world, Adam and Eve mess up, don't they? They, um, they disobey God and they eat the fruit from the tree that they're told not to eat fruit from. And it all starts going wrong. I'm going to go for a purple one. So how can I represent that? I can draw a fruit on a tree. I've got a few reference photos on up on my computer um, on Pinterest. So I will maybe link to that Pinterest board for you. This moment when Adam and Eve uh, decided to disobey God and eat the apple, um, how does that relate to Easter? Well, uh, Easter is the reversal of this moment. And there's a chapter in Romans, um, chapter 5, that talks a lot about this. It says, therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man, and death through sin. Also, death was passed to all men because all sinned. But then it goes on to say, but the gift, and that is the gift of Easter, is not like the trespass. For if the many died by the trespass of one man, how much more did God's grace and the gift that came by the grace of one man, Jesus Christ, overflow to the many? So, um, Yes, Jesus coming and dying on the cross and bringing us back to God is the reversal of Adam's disobedience. Okay, what happened next in the story? Um, Adam and Eve disobeyed God. They got chucked out of Eden and a lot of the rest of the Old Testament is... Um, God trying to uh, compel them to come back to him, but people um, sinning repeatedly over and over again. So what we need is a rescue mission for mankind. And of course, um, God does send the prophets and kings and things like that, but ultimately he needs to send Jesus to save us because nothing else will do. So he sends his son um, and so Jesus comes to earth and we of course celebrate that at Christmas but I just love the incarnation. I love that Jesus became flesh and the fact that he became flesh you know, part of the Easter story because it was his body that uh, needed to go through the um, the agony of the cross in order for our sins to be forgiven. So I'm going to do a little heart back to Christmas here. I just wanted to pop on and say um, that although I ended up doing these in quite an illustrative kind of way, um, you don't have to take that approach. If you're a bit intimidated about drawing things, um, then 
simplify it even further and do something like a, a pattern, a surface pattern. So instead of drawing something like this, um, you could go for something like this, just a, a very simple pattern of flowers. And um, instead of drawing the stable, um, you could go for a pattern of stars. And actually, when I was doing these simpler versions, I actually um, enjoyed them even more than the illustrative ones because it was so simple. You could really relax and concentrate on the meaning rather than worrying about the drawing and was it going to work out. So um, that is something else that you can try as an alternative. Okay. Um, right, so now we're going into the proper Easter time and we could... We could include all kinds of things. We could include Palm Sunday. We could try and draw a donkey or we could do some beautiful palm leaves. That would be really nice. I think I'm going to jump straight to the Last Supper um, because Jesus is really trying to get the disciples to home in on the fact that he is going to die, even though they don't really understand the meaning of that he tries to show them by giving them the bread and the wine so i'm going to attempt to draw some bread and some wine here i think so much um happens at this passover meal with jesus on the night before um he is crucified. Um, I had to get my Bible out and reread um, the accounts of it in the Gospels. Um, it starts with Jesus washing the disciples' feet, this amazing um, demonstration of uh, servant leadership and love. Um, and he talks about his command a new command i give to you love one another as i have loved you he calls out judas at the table and and says go you know go and do what you have to do which obviously sets everything in motion for the events that are going to follow he calls peter out as well who um who's trying to say you know i want to come with you jesus i'll follow you to the death and Jesus says, unfortunately not, um, and, you know, you're going to be tested too. Obviously, the whole Passover meal uh, for the Jews was a reminder of their rescue from slavery in Egypt. It was um, to remind them of the way that God had saved them from the spirit of death that came upon all the Egyptian children which was the final plague and uh, they put a lamb they killed a lamb and they put the blood of the lamb on the doorposts of their home so that when the spirit of death came it would pass over their homes and their children would be saved which of course is another picture of what Jesus's blood does for us on the cross. Okay, so um, from there they went to the Garden of Gethsemane um, where Jesus prayed. He asked his disciples to pray and they fell asleep. And then, of course, Judas came with the guards. Um, Peter tried to protect him and had his ear chopped off. You could choose any of these moments to just have a moment and ponder on. You could draw an ear, you could draw... Jesus praying, um, many of those things you could uh, draw. And then he's taken, isn't he, um, to before Pilate. And Pilate sort of tries to get him acquitted, but in the end pronounces him guilty. And, 
and um, washes his hands. I, I want to focus on the washing hands bit, I think. So when Pilate saw he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Then the people as a whole answered, his blood be on us and on our children. So he released Barabbas for them and after flogging Jesus, handed him over to be crucified. I think maybe the reason I was drawn to this particular moment in the story is because it highlights um, each of our personal responsibility for the events of Easter. Even though Pilate didn't want to uh, condemn Jesus, he did do it um, and he was responsible for sending Jesus to his death and in the same way although we might not want to sin um, we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God we have each of us played a part in nailing Jesus to that cross and also the way Pilate tries to absolve himself from his guilt by washing his hands um, there are many ways in which we try and get rid of our guilt or try harder um, not to sin to get sin out of our lives but it's all futile we can't do it and what we need to do is repent and accept jesus's free gift of grace for us and then um jesus was taken off to be crucified he was whipped um he was stripped naked and they put a crown of thorns on his head and they made him carry his cross and really for this egg i really just want to focus on jesus's suffering um so i could draw um someone carrying a cross or i could draw uh, some kind of whip or something like that um i think i'm going to draw the crown of thorns though and as I'm doing this, I'm just pondering what Jesus went through for me. It may seem a bit morbid um, to focus on Jesus's suffering, but for me, it is considering the cost that was paid for my freedom. The next three, I'm going to do Jesus's crucifixion. I'm going to do the curtain being torn at the temple to give us access to God and I'm going to do the resurrection and um, yeah I, I'm going to speed this up as I'm doing this I think So here's my eggs. Um, yours might look completely different. You might represent different uh, moments in the story. You might have more eggs. You might have less eggs. You might just have, if you just want to do these three, that's completely fine. It's up to you how much time and um, how much of the story you want to represent. So our final stage is to um, make a background on a journal page to put, put these onto. Um, you don't have to do that. You could just keep these as they are. And uh, like I said, you could use them as kind of story prompts. You could have them on the table during Easter Sunday, your Easter Sunday meal to talk with your family about. Um, you could uh string them up to make like a little garland perhaps an easter garland or um, hang them on some branches entirely up to you how you would like to use these but i am going to make a journal page <laughs> 